our Sunday services, and for uh, many decades, the lectionary has been the common lectionary, and then the revised common lectionary. Um, for the past five years, we've been using something called the narrative lectionary. So the narrative lectionary takes us from September through December, going through the Old Testament, and looking at the narrative portions of the Old Testament. Uh, so Adam and Eve, Abraham, Sarah, David, Isaiah, over four months. And then December to about April, we go through one of the Gospels uh, over those uh, three or four months. And then for about a month, we look at the Book of Acts or Paul's letters uh, for about four or five weeks. This is the third week of our series on Job. And the first week, I didn't have to preach because Pastor Eaton, uh, Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, uh, preached a sermon that we, we all participated in. And then the week after that, I was off and Philip preached. And this Sunday, we have another guest preacher. <laughs> So this is the third week and I'm going to get away without preaching. Actually, we're going to do kind of a dialogue uh, with three of us uh, looking at the text and dialoguing over it. Um, so the book of Job is interesting to me. I like uh, talking about the book of Job. Um, it's very important to me um, that in my preaching that people understand that we're supposed to be reading the Bible critically. And it's very important in the book of Job that people be reading the Bible uh, critically. Um, kind of understanding it in contrast to other parts of the Bible, um, putting it in that context and understanding how it is in itself unique. Um, and also we want to read uh, the Bible devotionally, but I think we can do those things together. We can read it critically and we can read it uh, devotionally. So the devotional reading of Job um, is a, a meditation on how do we approach God in prayer. And there are lots of examples in the Bible of how to approach God in prayer, which give us a sense of the freedom that we have to do that, um, the honesty with which we want to approach God in prayer. Um, and so Job is certainly an example of that. So Job is long, and in terms of a narrative, it feels long because there's not a lot of action. There's a lot of catastrophe right in the beginning and then it kind of goes on and on for another 30 chapters of dialogue and prayer and meditation and philosophy um, but it's also beautiful the imagery in Job, in Job is, uh, is just beautiful so in a devotional uh, sense Job is um, in the tradition of Abraham you know imposing upon God again and again and uh, speaking freely about how he feels uh, to God um, and much like uh, Jesus when he prays to God, uh, admitting that he has doubts, he has reservations, that he'd rather not do something, um, crying out to God in the sense of uh, feeling abandoned. Um, so Job is another way of helping us to think about how we can approach God in prayer in a way that is about the freedom that we have to be honest with God. Um, the other part that, we, that I always try to lift up though, the critical part, is to understand that uh, Job, from a critical point of view, is helping us to um, respond to those portions of the Bible that are what we call the wisdom tradition. And the wisdom tradition in the Bible is exemplified by the book of Proverbs. Um, but in many other places where you get the sense that if you follow these rules, you will be rewarded. Um, that our God is a God of reward and punishment. Um, that's not my faith, but it is certainly something that we find in the Bible. And Job is one of those places where it tries to take that on and to say, well, is that really true? And, you know, how, how would that play out if it were true? Um, so that idea of reward and punishment um, is seen in the book of Proverbs. It's also seen in the Ten Commandments where it says the sins of the father will be visited upon the children and down generations. Um, that's the ultimate reward and punishment, that you get punished for somebody else's sins. Um, so that idea of reward and punishment is not entirely untrue, in the sense that if you do something wrong, you're likely to, to have some consequences for that. <coughs> and even in that Ten Commandments sense, that if you do something wrong, it's likely to impact the people around you. Um, not in some way that God, you know, send some freakish supernatural lightning bolt to, to attack somebody randomly. Um, but in that sense that, you know, if you 
commit adultery, that impacts your family, it impacts your community. Um, if you have unhealthy habits like smoking cigarettes, that impacts the people around you. Um, so reward and punishment is not entirely untrue in that we do reap what we sow. There are consequences to the things that we do. Um, but in the sense of our relationship with God, uh, the Bible over and over again talks about grace. And it talks not so much about reward and punishment as it does promise and gift. And Lutherans refer to that as, uh, as grace. Um, so I think Job is a really interesting way in which we can look at a response, a reaction against wisdom literature that talks about reward and punishment, um, and does it in a way that is beautiful, that is poetic, that is philosophical, that is also in a narrative form that's really easy to remember and to narrative forms kind of stir our imagination to place ourselves into a situation, into a story. Uh, so that's the critical approach um, to this reading of Job that I think is really uh, very important. Whoa! Ha, ha, ha.